So here's another video on graphing systems of equations and then more specifically, how do you find the vertices? So I figured, you know, for time reasons, uh, I would uh, do the easy ones first. So red and blue are up there already. So as you can tell, I'll, you know, I'll talk about it, and but you might want to pause and make sure you understand what the heck I did. So y is less than or equal to x. So I graph y equals x, which, and we had an example like this in class, or it was in a classwork. That means the slope is zero, because it's x plus zero. So, or excuse me, whoa, that's totally wrong. The intercept is zero, because it's plus zero. All right, so the y-intercept is zero, and then the slope is one, it's one x. So I go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. So there's blue, and then similarly with red, and they're both solid, because uh, the solid lines, because it's less than or equal to, uh, or greater than or equal to in the uh, red one. All right, and then above, the red below the blue means we're going to shade uh, in here-ish. All right. Now we're not done, but if this was the whole problem, that's where we would shade is in between below the blue and above the red. Uh, but that's not what we're doing because we have the green ones. Okay. And so the green ones were the ones that were new. We talked about it a little bit in class, but maybe another one, another example I feel like would be a good idea. And so green one. So the green one, when you have absolute value and is equal to a number or less than or equal to a number or greater than or equal to a number you always check what out check what i did you always switch into two all right so you're trying to find the boundaries for that region and the way you do that is you switch it into two different equations those are the boundaries so you get y minus one is three y minus one is three the bottom one here and y minus one is negative three so <clears throat> of course we just do a little bit of algebra and I want an appropriate pen here. So you do a little bit of algebra. You add one to both sides and you get, well here you get y, add one to both sides, you get negative three plus one, so you get y equals negative two. And you get y equals, you add one to both sides in the second one, you get y equals four, okay? So, of course, I have a couple of guys down here already. These are both horizontal lines. Y equals negative 2 and Y equals 4 are both horizontal lines. So Y equals 4 is up 4. So here's Y equals 0, Y equals 1, 2, 3, 4. Right, oh, maybe right here. And then Y equals negative 2 is down 2. Okay, and so remember what we do is that, and actually maybe I should have made it, you know, done a little bit differently. When we switch it up like this, I should not have put the, the equal signs. Okay, I did just to remind you we're graphing equations here, but really when we switch this up back in chapter one, when, you know, it's discussed, it's always, <clears throat> well, let me do this one first. It's always x, y minus one is greater, is less than or equal to the positive three, and it's always greater than or equal to uh, the negative three. Man, I'm having technical difficulties here. Let me, uh, stuff didn't work out the way I thought it would. Okay, so greater than, great, less than. And so I'll switch this up here. This has got to be, well, greater than negative two, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to four, okay? So it's greater than or equal to negative 2. So it's above the negative 2 and below the 4. So <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll kind of maybe use the highlighter to kind of do a real light highlighter. Uh, this will do. So like I said from the beginning, it's... between these two, it's above the red and below the blue, and that's this part here was where you would graph or sketch or shade, whatever, okay? But wait a second, that's not really right. We also wanna be between the negative two and the four. So it's less than four and greater than negative two. And how that works is we, you, so you gotta be above, and I need a bigger thing here. Uh, oh, that's way bigger than I wanted to, oh well. 
So they're in there. So this color, this, this is ridiculous. But let me shade it in with a darker color to make it a little bit better. Maybe, uh, I had a crayon. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Pen, and then whatever. I'll do like black. So really the deal is it's above and it's between the greens, above the red, and <clears throat> below the blue. So there you go. It looks that looks horrible. And so there you go. You have a little uh, quadrilateral, a little uh, <clears throat> you know, reg generic quadrilateral, really. Okay. So then what you have to do is you have to figure out what the vertices are, and really on all the problems that you have to do in the uh, class, what you do in the classwork, it's nice regular integer values. So let me get you know a creative pen here. And then I'll use happy face. So we got a guy there. There's one vertex. There's another. There's a third and a fourth. And then you can figure out what the vertices are there. And so where are these vertices? Well, uh, lower left is at negative two, negative. <laughs> I always do that when I have a creative pen out. Uh, back it up. Switch to the regular pen because it's ridiculous. Uh, boom. And so yeah, negative two, negative two is this corner here. Uh, one, two, three, four, it looks like, negative two. <clears throat> and then the top left is up four, but and over four as well, so four, four. You know, over to the right four is this four, of course, and then up four is the second four. And then it looks like it's over seven up four. And there you go. There are all the vertices. All right. So that's how you find the vertices. Really, that last step is not that big of a deal. Really, the main reason I figure you probably like to see another example, and especially the greenies. You guys might want to see another example of the green ones. So there you go. Here's how you find it. There's how you find the vertices. Now, for the last couple of minutes here, I'm going to like intro what's going to be in three four just a little bit. So really, 3-3, three, three, if you can graph all this stuff and figure out where the corners are, and like I said, it'll always be nice integers. So as long as you're careful and precise and use your ID that you'll have on in class as a straight edge, you should be good to go. All right? But just a little segue and a, and a uh, you know, a preview, is a better way to put it, of 3-4, I want to introduce you to the idea of a function like this down here. Now this might be very crazy looking. This is a function of X and Y. <clears throat> okay, it's actually a linear function of x and y. Let me bring them up to the top. Okay, and we'll, I'll go into more detail later, but it's, I mean, it's a linear function because it's only thing that's happening to the variables x and y is addition, subtraction, maybe multiply by constant. There's no powers, there's no radicals around the x and y. Anyway, this is a linear function with two variables, x and y. So it's weird, there's two independent variables. x and y are both independent variables. And then there's the numbers that you plug in to the function. So it's a little weird. But what's up is that it's no big deal. It's just if you want to figure out what the answer is, the value for your dependent variable, you know, f of x, y is how you read this, then what you do is you literally just need, you need x and y to plug in. So normally you're used to f of x, okay? Let's say you have f of x. And then you'd plug in a number for x and figure out the answer. And then ignore, pretend this isn't there. All right, so it'd be like 2x, right? f of x equals 2x. All right, that's a linear function with just x, right? And you know how to deal with that. Um, undo, undo. So it's a similar deal, it's just you gotta also got to plug in a Y. So notice what this looks like right here, what I just made blue. Um, it's an awful lot like ordered pairs. So what you can do is, with well, the uh, idea is you can plug in this stuff, ordered pairs, into <clears throat> functions of X and Y, functions with two independent variables. So F of X, Y, Okay, so if you want, let's say, f of 4, 4. Now, that's a bad first example. Let's do f 
of 4 comma negative 2. So notice, it really does look like I'm kind of, it looks like an ordered pair. All right, you have <clears throat> two independent variables, x and y, and your dependent variables, sometimes, I don't know if the book does this, sometimes we say z equals f of x of y. All right, whatever. Okay, it's a third variable that's the dependent variable. And so you just do 2 times 4 minus negative 2, and so you get 8 plus 2 equals 10. Okay, and you can do that for any point. It doesn't have to be a vertex. I could do that with the origin, even though that's not a ver vertex. You get f of 0, 0 is, well, this one's pretty easy. 2 times 0 minus 0. Um, I'm pretty sure that's 0. There you go. So that's a little bit of what you're going to have to do in 3, 4. So hopefully that little intro is helpful.